It's been over one year since our Around the Backyard tour where we rode over 5,000 kilometers around New South Wales in 14 days. And thanks to COVID, we are way, way overdue for our next adventure. So in just four days time, we are leaving, oh, hang on. So in just two days time, today's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. So in just two days time, we are leaving on a four day murdo adventure. Three nights, four days. You'll be watching this on Sunday. We'll be already on the road, baby. We'll already be out there. Just going, what the hell are we doing? What the hell is going on? And we only decided on this three days ago. So I thought I would take this opportunity to share with you guys five tips for planning your own first motorcycle adventure. Or your second or your third. Maybe you pick up some tips on the way. Who knows? Some of the tips I'm about to show you may seem super obvious. This is more just for the people that are keen to get out there and explore the world on their motorcycle but I've just been unsure about it. And I guess we will see how successful the trip is when I go to upload my vlogs next week. Ghoul. Tip number one is riding with the right people. This is very, very important. You need to pick a crew that make you feel comfortable and safe while on a trip. There's nothing worse than feeling nervous and then being pulled through somewhere. They're riding so far ahead. They're not willing to wait up for you. You're feeling like you have to push a little bit harder, which is just dangerous and not ideal for any situation. You want to feel in control, comfortable. If you want to ride slow, you ride damn slow. Safety is number one, the number one factor with any of this sort of stuff, motorcycle riding in general. But with long motorcycle trips, you don't want anything to happen. You don't want to be stuck out anywhere with anything going wrong. You want to have that backup. You want to have that support from your friends or from the group that you're riding with, but they're going to be there to help you get through this and vice versa you want to be able to help other people as well if you've got mates that aren't that experienced on the road you want them to feel comfortable and safe as well are they going to be cool if you want to change plans at the last minute maybe they want to do a massive ride and spend an extra three hours doing something on the way home or going out somewhere but maybe you're just tired you're too fatigued and you don't want to do that are they going to be cool with you cancelling the plans on them or just coming to a negotiation you've got to negotiate all the time with this sort of stuff if you're feeling tired fatigued you gotta call it, you gotta call it, you gotta have a little rest. So being able to have a crew with you that are flexible with decisions is very important as well. You also wanna bring crew with you that aren't negative. They're not negative Nancys. This is a positive time, you know, this is like your positive riding experience through twisties, through mountains, up to the damn Himalayas, who knows? But you don't want that negative crew with you that are just making that trip a massive drag. Stuff that. Negative Nancy's can stay home, they're not part of my crew, positive vibes only, good times only, hell yeah. For this trip, we're taking Nick, obviously, he's a pain in my ass, um, I'm a pain in his as well, and that's what gets us through. It's a good, it's a good balance, we have a good balance. When I'm feeling low, he's always up and he's pulling me through and vice versa, so we work really well with each other there. We also have another special guest who's tagging along, his name is Wenley Andrews. You guys have met him during that Thruxton build, he's like one of the best custom motorcycle builders in Australia, which is awesome because that means if I get a flat now, he's going to change it for me and I can just film him. How good's that? So that's cool. So he's coming along and he's an absolute legend as well. Like it's going to be, it's going to be sick. So they're the two crew, three men, three men team this time, which is going to be mad. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be actually heaps fun. So people are very important. Whoever you bring with you needs to be on the same level as you. Tip number two is know where you're going. Where the hell are you going? What's your destination? All you have to do literally is go to Google Maps, type in your destination, drop a pin, and then decide on how the heck you wanna get there. Do you wanna go way out west, 500 kilometers, and then come all the way back in to reach your destination that might be like 20 Ks down the road? <laughs> how do you wanna do it? How do you wanna get there? I've finished planning our route, route, route. So we've gone from Sydney down to Mystery Bay. Mystery Bay, um, or hopefully anyway, I'm waiting for them to call me back. I've just try to make a booking. Sick little camping spot on the beach, nice and warm. And that's like five hours from Sydney to Mystery Bay. And then from Mystery Bay to Mount Kosciuszko is like three, three and a half hours. Um, so that means that we can sort of explore that area. And where we're going is so, so sick. It's like the dream spot. There's still a bit of snow, like we're in summer now, and there's still snow there on the mountains. That's like our ski resort area in winter. It's gonna be bloody epic. And look at all those twisties, man. Are you serious? And then of course, the distance determines how many days you're gonna be on the road. How many days do you wanna be riding for? Five days, six days, two weeks, a year? It's completely up to you. Once you've determined the distance, then you can go through and look at all the roads, the different road surfaces. This is a mistake that we made when we did the Around the Backyard tour. We didn't check that out and we got stuck on a road that was full on the worst 
textured road ever. We were flying around everywhere. All the weight on the back was horrible. 120 k's the road went for. We thought it was gonna end in like 10 minutes, but it took us like three hours. Scorching heat, it was ridiculous. So that was a mistake that we made. This is what I'm telling you guys. Check the terrain on the roads that you're gonna be riding on. This will save you stress, panic, worry, <laughs> and you know, a disaster if it all goes bad. The distance will also determine how many hours on the road you wanna spend each day. So you need to work this out before we start booking in accommodation. So how many hours are you comfortable riding per day? If it's five hours, you allow an extra two hours on top of that for breaks. You wanna allow more time than less. We made this mistake also in the backyard tour. We didn't really plan for that. We thought five hours riding, we'll smash it out in five hours and never happens, especially filming and everything. And we actually ended up rocking up to our accommodations and everything a lot later. We didn't want to really be riding at night or a sunset time because of all the kangaroos and all that sort of stuff that comes out. So we didn't take that into account. So that's what I'm telling you guys. If you're planning on riding for five hours, allow seven hours or eight hours so you can relax. Things always go wrong. You gotta prepare for the worst. And also just double check the range of your tank. Make sure there are enough gas stations along the way so that you don't run out of damn petrol. And then from here, you can determine where you want to be staying. You're going to be camping. Are you going to be staying at a hotel? Are you going to be doing both? Once you plan out your five hour riding path, that's when you can start booking accommodation, each section of the way. And do this well in advance because you don't want to be booked out. You don't want to be screwed, which is, we're sort of there. <laughs> I haven't told the boys yet, but I don't have accommodation for Sunday night yet. I just can't find any. Let's see how we go. <laughs> Tip three is know the weather. So now that we have our destination all done, we've locked in accommodation, we've locked in everything. What's the weather gonna be like? What are your riding conditions gonna be like? Is it gonna be pouring rain for the second day and then snowing the third day and then scorching hot the next day after that? Plan accordingly. And the way I do this is by looking at the weather at each stop that you're gonna be going to. So for us, our first stop, hopefully, if we get accommodation, is Mystery Bay. So I'm looking at the weather there. You can look at the weather in between if you feel like doing that also, just to make sure that you're gonna be sweet. Now Sunday for us is pretty sketchy. Looks like massive storms. We've been having El Nino kick in hard and we've just been getting massive amounts of rain, which sucks. Then when we're at Mount Kosciuszko, it's literally snowing there still. So it's gonna be damn freezing at night. So we're gonna be prepared for that. So you need to gear up accordingly to the weather, which leads me to my next tip. Know what to bring with you. I'm a checklist kind of guy. I write checklists for everything that I do. Now, the way I like to make checklists up is that I like to categorize everything. So I'll have my camping gear, my camera gear, my bike setup, my moto gear, my clothes, and then another list for things that I need to buy. And then as you go on through, as you're packing them up, just tick them off the checklist, baby. Chick, 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 chick. So to give you an idea of what I'm bringing with me for my camping stuff, I'm gonna run it through you right now. Packing my tent, my mat, a sleeping bag, Thermal liner, because we're gonna be in the snow, it's gonna be pretty chilly. A knife, plate, bowl, cutlery. This thing's awesome, this is a full-on cut tool kit. There's only a few bucks at like a cheap store, works amazingly. A lighter, head torch, bug spray, dehydrated food, snacks, water, a cooker, a grill, collapsible kettle, these things are sick also. If there's anything that you can buy that's collapsible, buy it because collapsible saves space and space is what you need all the time. Painkillers, batteries, tie down straps, multi-tool, a bandana and garbage bags. Nick will be bringing a first aid kit and sunscreen. So that's, that's sorted there. A little tip for packing, just pack the essentials. Don't pack anything that you don't need because space is everything. Space and weight, you don't want too much crap on your bike, trust me. It just takes you longer to pack up, takes you longer to do everything and time is important as well. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on all the stuff that I've got, where it's from and everything like that. I do have a few videos out that you can watch and it shows what I'm packing or what I normally pack for my motor vlogs and what I pack for my camping stuff, where I bought it from, how much it costs and all that sort of stuff. I'll link them at the end of the vid. So make sure you stick around and watch them. They're really cool. Tip number five is prep your motorcycle. So now that we've determined what weather we're riding in, we've determined what roads we're riding on, we've determined literally everything. But what about your bike? How's that looking? Do you need to put new tires on it? Do you need semi off-road tires to handle the off-roading that you're gonna be doing? Do you wanna put a fly screen on to stop all the wind from smashing your chest and fatiguing you? Check your tire pressures, lube your chains, do a, do a service, go right over the entire bike and make sure everything's working. Brakes, headlights, indicators, everything. Make sure it's all sweet and it's not gonna conk out on you when you're in the middle of damn nowhere. 
And a few days before you leave, pack all your bags, all the stuff that you're gonna be taking with you, pack it on the bike and then go for a little test ride and make sure that you feel comfortable with everything because the bike literally feels like a complete different machine once you've got everything on there. And if you're not used to it, you're already sort of nervous because you're gonna be heading out on a massive road trip. There's nothing worse than feeling your bike weigh an extra 80 kilos or something. Like literally I'll be taking a five liter bottle of water on the side in my pannier bag and that's just five kilos now extra on the left hand side so instantly the bike just feels heaps different let alone all the gear that'll be behind me so take it out for a test ride be comfortable with it find your feet with it it's just nicer to do so peace of mind as well now things will go wrong you will experience hardships you might you might drop your bike you might snap the shift shaft like what happened to me are you prepared are you prepared for that do you have the tools with you oh, that's another thing i forgot to add Bring the tools, <laughs> bring the right tools, bring your tool, your basic tools. Take whatever you need, Allen head keys, shifter, spanner, just things that you can pack, whatever you can. You might need to tension up your chain as well if you're doing a massive ride. So make sure you bring your breaker bar and the right nut size so you can loosen your rear axle up, push the tire back, lock it all back up again. Get all that experience with you, get all that knowledge with you. You need to learn how to do this stuff before you head out on the on a massive trip. Motorcycle touring is one of the best things that you can do on a bike, especially with the group of mates, the right people, you prepped, you planned, everything's sorted out. But just thinking about it all, being prepared and ready for anything that can happen will save you, could save your life, could save your mate's life, and it'll save you the stress while you're on the ride itself. And also, remember to stay hydrated. Camel pack's always a good idea. Should've bought one, didn't buy one, should've bought one. But camel pack's awesome. Just put it on there and then you're riding, get thirsty, stick in your mouth, have a little supple, and you're good to go. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rob Hamilton, ride safe on this trip that of yours that you're doing. Let me know if you have any other tips in the comments below because I really want to hear them. Wish us luck, wish us luck. Holy crap, we're going on a massive ride. It's another one. It's exciting, it's an exciting time. Peace.